Uh, hey everyone, my name is uh, Aziz. Um, I'm presenting my final project. Um, what I did was a wall clock. Um, some of my, of my inspiration was due to some of the feedback I got from the first assignment, um, where I really focused on the functionality of the project and the aesthetic kind of came out as like an afterthought, which kind of limited my options. So for this time, I made sure to choose a simple project. That's why I used like wall clock, which gave me room, a lot of room for the aesthetics. Um, so my the aesthetics I wanted to go with was a mechanical engineering theme. Um, that's why I used um, hand tools like hammers, um, wrenches, um, screwdrivers, instead of the numbers on the clock. Um, and I also incorporated CU's logo and used the black and gold colors um, to the clock, which is pretty cool. Um, so the, the frame was 3D printed from PLA. Uh, so I had to CAD the whole thing, which took a lot of time. <laughs> um, and I had a lot of really difficult ge geometry, um, but it, it turned out pretty good. Um, the, 3D, the new 3D printers on the ITL did a great job. Um, yeah. So for the materials I used, um, the clock arms I already had. I used like a, one that I got. Um, and then, so that was, for, that was free. I had to pr uh, buy the 3D printing filament, which was like 40 bucks. And the spray paint was like $6 and a battery pack to turn on the clock. So the procedure, I had to first 3D print the frame. Um, I painted it and then I put it inside the shaft of the clock, um, secured it, um, and then inserted the arms, the clock arms, and then just put in the battery and set it up. Some of the lessons learned was that um, I used a wood and metal spray paint and I don't know if it shows in the image, but it, it, it kind of melted some of the edges because it's so strong to stick in. Um, actually, I'm thinking of redoing the 3D print on that part and use a better spray paint um, for the expo. Another lesson was, um, yeah, uh, when, I, when I finished the CAD, I didn't um, put into consideration the size the printers have, the maximum size. So what happened when I went to print it, it was too big um, and I had to redo the CAD um, to fit it in. Some of the future steps that I would like to add is to add spinning gears to the clock but that need that would need um, like an external motor, which I couldn't find a place to mount it on. Which is why I also want, would like to build like a housing or a frame or a case to hold it in. That way I can I, I definitely would have space to mount the motor or any um, extra stuff that I wanted. Uh, a cool system that I really wanted to implement was an alarm system. But that also required to have like even a Raspberry Pi, like some sort of computer or micro microcontroller, uh, which I really didn't have space to model it on. Um, and yeah, that's, you guys got any questions? So how big is it now? Uh, it's 12 inch in diameter. Um, I didn't bring it with me today because I've been on camera since eight and I didn't want to like walk around. How big was it before? It was, I think it was 24. Oh, it was yeah, it was gigantic. Yeah. I was honestly like I've been using metric system my entire life, so I, my intuition mm. in inches is not too good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, Fair. but it's it's pretty big, even though it's twelve. It's really big. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool.